So hello everyone, we, um, I'm here to tour you in the GED test science workbook with the um, McGraw Field Education 3rd edition. I am teacher Flora and this is our review. So I will tour you to the different chapters and we will try to answer the questions as we go by. So we have life science, physical science, earth and space science. So let's start. So we have here a diagram of a cell. So what is the function of the cell wall? So it does not build proteins. That is the function of the mitochondria, ah, sorry, the ribosome. It does not convert um, solar energy to chemical energy. That's the function of the chloroplast. Uh, it may protect and provide support for the cell. And it does not take in carbon dioxide. So the correct answer for this obviously is letter C. So it protects the whole cell as well as it provides support. So we have questions two and three, which are based on the following information. The following reaction takes place in a reaction vessel. We have the heat plus A, which is solid, plus B, which is liquid, and converted to, to two C's. A 2C that is solid and the B which is also solid. The chemist who is carrying out the reaction in the laboratory repeats the experiment under various conditions in order to produce the maximum possible amounts of substances C and D. This reaction can be classified as, let's see, there is um, an addition of heat and therefore, if heat is applied, therefore, the reaction is endothermic. If heat is removed, that becomes exothermic. It's not also in equilibrium. And because there is no uh, reciprocal or reverse uh, reaction, and it's not also a nuclear reaction. So the correct answer for this is letter A. Which of the following factors will not help the chemist in change, to change the speed or rate of reaction? We're talking about changing of the speed or the reaction, the rate of reaction, uh, not help the chemist. So uh, we're talking, uh, we're looking for something that will not help the chemist to. Uh, increase the speed or change the speed or the rate of reaction. A, increasing the temperature of the system, it can help. B, let's see, using powdered reactants. Increasing the pressure in the system, yes, you might increase or decrease the pressure. It will change the speed or the rate of reaction. And adding catalyst, although it does not the catalyst does not uh, play uh, a role in the in the reactants as well as that of the product. However, it uh, it changes the speed or rate of reaction. So the correct answer for this is letter B. It does not help the chemist in changing the rate of reaction if you are using powdered reactants. Next, which is, equation is not correctly balanced? So we have letter A. Let's see the reactant. We have uh, one carbon here. The result, we have one carbon. Oxygen, we have two. And we also have two oxygen. Okay. For B, we have one, one sodium here. But we have two in here. So we remove this choice. Calcium here is one. And chlorine is 
in here is also 2 but we will see how it is this is correctly balanced they are correctly balanced a and c let us see for d 302 and 203 that is 6 6 so correctly balanced the correct answer for this not correctly balanced is we have letter b use the following information to ask to answer questions five and nine the Centers of Disease Control recommends that children in the United States receive certain vaccination at given ages. Several of these vaccinations are repeated at specific intervals between birth and age 6. Many of these diseases, or many of the diseases for which children are routinely vaccinated today, used to pose serious health concerns in the past. However, since vaccinations began, some of these diseases have declined by 100%. For example, in the years just prior to the introduction of the measles vaccine, more than 503,000 cases were reported annually. In 2007, there were only 43 cases of the disease. So we have here the graph or the chart that is the recommended immunization schedule for persons aged 0 through 6 years in the United States in 2011. So, uh, we have the different vaccines here and then the birth, uh, I mean the ages of which these types of vaccines can be, uh, in, can be given. According to the information given, which is the which of the following can be most properly inferred? So let us see. Letter A. Children receive the varicella on the same schedule in which they receive the missiles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. So you can have this and this one. So A can be a probable answer for this. Children receive the rotavirus vaccine, the rotavirus vaccine, on the same schedule they receive the pneumococcal vaccine. So we have the rotavirus here and the pneumococcal, pneumococcal vaccine in here. Same schedule, let's see, yes but they have another schedule for 12 months to 15 months. So we can uh, cross this out. All children, all children receive the meningococcal vaccine between the ages of 2 and 6. All children between... However, you, yes, you can, but range of recommended ages for certain high-risk groups only. So we will remove this because of the term all children because you see here they are recommended for certain high-risk groups. The influenza vaccine is not given to children in uh, high-risk groups. So we have the influenza, but you see here it is not given to high-risk groups. So we remove this. So, the correct answer for this is letter A. According to the information given, which is a, a true statement? So, let us see. Children receive the rotavirus vaccine one time between ages 2 months and 6 months. We'll go back. So, we have the rotavirus. Rotavirus is here one time between ages six months and uh, ages two months and six months one time only uh, actually we have three rotaviruses i mean rotavirus vaccines so the letter a is not the correct answer all children should receive the meningococcal vaccine between the ages 2 and 6 years old. Between 2 and 6 years old, yes. However, we see here 
they should be uh, this is recommended for certain high risk groups only so we will uh, remove this children are vaccinated against diphtheria here we have diphtheria tetanus and pertussis four times before their second birthday let's see we have one two three and then four four times before their second birthday so before they can become two years old they should have four vaccines so letter c is uh let's see probable the probable answer letter d the hepatitis b vaccine must be repeated ages six months 12 months 15 months and 18 months let us see hepatitis b is started should be started at birth one month two months six months until 18 months so should be uh, should start should be repeated starting the first and second month so this is not the correct answer we have the correct answer is letter c a patient receives the same vaccination each winter according to the chart which disease is this vaccination preventing you see here that you have a yearly um yearly vaccination of influenza so the correct answer for this is letter b influenza not hepatitis a not pneumococcus not even varicella diphtheria a disease caused by bacteria found in the mouth and throat causes patients to suffer from sore throat as well as fever and chills Untreated, it can lead to complications including heart failure and paralysis. It can be fatal in approximately 10% of those who contract the disease and used to be a major cause of death in children. As recently in the 20, 1920s, about 15,000 people died from diphtheria each year, which assumption can be made regarding this disease. So, more Letter A, we have more people die from diphtheria today than 100 years ago. Of course not, because with the advent of the diphtheria vaccine, it uh, lessened the number of fatalities with uh, diphtheria from 100 years than 100 years ago. Diphtheria vaccine has eliminated sore throats among young children. Uh, it did not. It did not eliminate diphtheria, uh, the sore throats among we uh, among young children because diphtheria is not only the cause of bacteria or the cause of sore throats among young children. So we remove this. Diphtheria was the most serious health problem or health concern facing people. In the 1920s it can be but it is not the most serious so we remove this widespread of use uh, widespread use of the diphtheria vaccine has significantly reduced its threat which is of course the reason why we have vaccines is to reduce the threat of the different diseases so the correct answer for this is letter D Pertussis, also known as whooping cough, whooping cough, looks like a common cold. However, after a few weeks, it causes patients to suffer violent coughing spells and may lead to pneumonia, seizures, and brain infections. In some cases, it can be fatal. It is spread through the air from one person to the next, but can be prevented through vaccination. Which type of disease is pertussis? It's not age-related because it does not emphasize here if it is for uh, young people or for the old. So all, all persons or all types of patients can have this uh, type of disease. Environmental, uh, it's not. 
environmental because it does not say that uh, it comes from the environment. It does not also say that it is hereditary, but it is spread, spread through the air from one person to the next and therefore it is infectious. The correct answer for this is letter D. Next one, we have here a diagram comparing mitosis and meiosis. So mitosis, this is the cell division among somatic cells and meiosis is the cell division among sex cells. When comparing mitosis and meiosis, you can say that both processes, A, produce the, the same number of daughter cells, of course. You can see from the, the drawing or diagram that it can only, mitosis can have only two daughter cells and meiosis has four. Produce sex cells with exact number or exact same number of chromosomes as the parent cell that will do for mitosis but not in meiosis. Why? Because the number of chromosomes for the, for the parent cell for mitosis is the same with the daughter cells. However, in meiosis, the sex cells, I mean the, the number of chromosomes from the parent becomes only half or uh, yes, uh, it can only have half of the parent cells. I mean the chromosomes, number chromosomes. Involve the replication of DNA? Yes, because during mitosis and even in meiosis, there should be a replication of the DNA before they can divide. And then will have mutations? No, they will not have mutations unless uh, it is uh, it becomes another type of cell division. So the correct answer for this is letter C. So we have a diagram here that will be um, that will answer the questions for number 11 and number 12. For number 11, what is the role of the mole in the food web shown? So we have here the leaves are the producers. It is eaten by the first or the primary consumer, which is the slug. The slug eats, eats the leaves that makes the slug the primary consumer. The mole eats the slug and therefore it becomes the secondary consumer. So the correct answer for this is letter A. For number 12, during which link in the food web is the most energy transferred? So is it from the caterpillar to the blue jay or the nectar to the butterfly or the rabbit and the eagle or the mole to the eagle? Of course, most of the energy should come from the producers. So the nectar is actually from the plant and therefore it has more energy or more, yes, more energy when transferred to the butterfly. So the correct answer for this is letter B. Behavior is the way in which organisms interact with other organisms and their environments. In both people and, animal, and animals, behavior occurs in response to an external stimulus. In an internal stimulus or both. Some behaviors are innate or built in. These innate behaviors include reflexes and instincts. Other behaviors are learned as a result of experiences. Which of the following is an example of a reflex? Let us see. A person blinking when something is thrown toward him or her. Actually, this is an example of a reflex. Let's see the others. A baby crawling in the floor before it begins to walk. This is actually an instinct. Another, a bird gathering material to build its nest. Another, 
behavior that is instinct or built in? Oh no, instinct. A dog, a dog barking, barking when it hears a doorbell is also an example of an instinct. So the correct answer for this is letter A. For questions 14 to 16 are based on the following passage. A teacher is showing experiments in magnetism to her science class. She gets two four-inch long magnetic bars. The north poles of the bars are painted red and the south poles are painted blue. She has her students write down their observations about what happens when she lines up the magnet with the north pole near each other. Then she has her students write down their observations about what happens when she lines up the magnets with the south poles near each other. Finally, she had her students write down their observations about what happens when she lines up the magnets with one north pole and one south pole near each other. For the second part of the experiment, the teacher takes one of the bar magnets and rubs it along the length of a steel ruler for several minutes, always in the same direction. She then holds the, rule, the ruler over a paper clip to show that the ruler the ruler has now been magnetized and will attract the paper clip. In the third part of the experiment, the teacher takes a long piece of copper wire and coils it. She attaches each, of, each end of the wire to the base of a small low voltage light bulb. She passes one of the bars, bar magnets through the middle of the wire coil and has her students record the result. In the second experiment, why does the steel ruler, ruler be, become magnetized when the bar magnet is rubbed along the ruler's length? The magnet causes the electrons in the ruler to line up in the same direction. Or B, the pressure on the ruler causes it, causes it to oppose the polarity of the magnet. C, Small bits of the magnet rub off onto the ruler and those particles are what make the ruler magnetic. D. Steel is already magnetic and the magnet reverses the polarity of the ruler. The correct answer for this is letter A. Why? Because during the second part of the experiment, the teacher takes the bar magnets and rubs it along the length of the steel ruler, always in the same direction. So eventually, the electrons of the ruler line up in the same direction. So uh, that is the reason why the ruler or the teacher has to rub it on the length of the steel ruler at the, always at the same direction. For 15, diagram blank could illustrate the field lines created around the poles of the magnetic bars when they are placed near each other. The field lines along the magnet move away from the north pole and toward the south pole. Only diagram B shows the field lines moving away from the north pole. So the correct answer for this is letter B. Which of the following accurately predicts what will happen when the magnetic bars are placed through the middle of the wire coil? Of course, the correct answer is letter C. The light bulb lights up because the movement of a magnet around the wire will cause an electric current to be Produce and therefore the electric bulb will light up and uh, that's it. A physicist is conducting an experiment regarding the momentum of objects in motion. She has a car, a baseball, a snowball, and a hockey player on ice skates ready to move. Each of the objects is set in motion and its velocity is measured. The momentum of each object is then calculated. Next, the moving objects are set two at a time to collide 
with each other head on. Which of the following has the greatest momentum? Of course, you have to get to find the momentum of an object, you multiply the mass of the object by its velocity. So if we look at the different um, different choices, we have letter A will have uh, the greatest momentum because you multiply 1,100 kilogram car by the speed that is 20, you get you get 22. 22,000 kilogram meter per second. Let's see letter B. You get 5.075 kilogram meter per second as the momentum. Let's see letter C. We have four, four point five kilogram meter per second. And lastly, for letter D, we get one thousand twenty kilogram meter per second as its momentum. So the highest, as we see. Is that of letter A, which is 22,000 kilograms meter per second? Which pair of objects will demonstrate conservation of momentum when they collide with each other? A hockey player and a baseball only, the car and the baseball only, none of the objects, or all of the objects. Actually, the conservation of momentum are uh, all all objects that will collide will demonstrate conservation of momentum. So the correct answer for this is letter D. Questions 19 and 20 are based upon the following passage. For the school science fair, Evelyn wanted to determine the optimal amount of water for marigold plants. She planted the same number of marigold seed in each of 30 pots. She divided the pots into three groups with 10 in each group and labeled the groups A, B, and C. She, wa she watered the plants in group A daily, group B twice a week, and group C once a week. The plants received an equal amount of water each time. She predicted that the plants watered daily will, would be the tallest at the end of the month. Question, which of the following would not be necessary for the experiment to be valid? A, using the same size pots, B, including the, a control group, planting all seeds in the same type of soil, making sure the plants receive an equal amount of sunlight. Since she is um, testing for the number of uh, watering the plants, in different times of the week the control group there should not, not it should not include a control group anymore because all you have the same size pots planting all size all of the seeds in the same type of soil making sure all has sunlight however uh, since the control group is not uh, necessary because uh, we have the three groups and you're only testing the group or the plants in the equal the amount of water or uh, the frequency of watering the plants in a week so letter B is the correct answer and these
The watering schedule Evelyn used in the experiment is actually an independent variable. So the correct answer is C. Why? Because uh, Evelyn is changing the watering schedule or the frequency by which she waters the plant. So that becomes the variable. The dependent variable, however, is the output or effect of the experiment. So uh, it is not included there that there is already a, a result, but she only had the, her hypothesis because she predicted. Okay? So the correct answer for this is that questions 21 and 22 are based on the following passage. Laura accidentally dropped a book that she has been holding up in the air. The book weighed 2 kilograms. It fell 1.8 meters to the ground, making a loud noise when it hit. Assume that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second squared. And PE is equal to MGH or potential energy is equal to mass, gravity, and height. How much potential energy the, did the book possess while in Laura's hand? So if we have the potential energy which is equal to mass times gravity times height, so the mass of the book is 2.0 2.0 kilogram multiply it by the gravity which is 9.81 meter per second squared and multiplied by the height which is 1.8 meters so uh, this will add up to 35.5 joules the unit we will use is the joules so the correct answer for this is letter A. As the book fell through the air and eventually hit the ground, the potential energy was destroyed and kinetic energy was created. The sound energy was created. Both potential and kinetic energy were destroyed. The energies of the system were converted from one form to another. Since energies cannot be created or destroyed, uh, we will remove A because destroyed, the term destroyed and created for also letter B, as well as letter C for the term destroyed. However, it may be converted from one form to another. So the correct answer for that is letter B. Questions 23 to 25 are based from the following passage. The physical structure of Earth includes three basic layers. At the center of the planet, the solid and very dense core. Inner core surrounded by a liquid outer core. The outer core, which contains iron, spins at the, as the planet rotates, generating a magnetic field as it flows. Together, the inner and outer cores are approximately 2,200 miles thick and make up one, about one-third of the Earth's mass. The core is covered by a layer called the mantle. It is semi-solid, and although it is not the hottest layer of the planet, it's still so hot that some of the rocks in the layers are or is molten. This rock flows slowly, similar to hot asphalt. The mantle is covered by a rigid outside layer, which is the crust. 
This layer is about 25 miles thick beneath the continents and 4 miles thick beneath the oceans. So it's thicker by the continents than that of the oceans, which is relatively thin compared to the other two layers. The uppermost part of the mantle, mantle is cooler than the deeper parts and combines with the other of the planet's thin crust to form the lithosphere. This layer has broken into pieces known as the tectonic plates, which are constantly moving as they float, float on a layer of melted rock. So we have this uh, diagram. We have the crust and the uppermost uh, solid part of the mantle is what we call the lithosphere. And then we have the mantle. Uh, the asthenosphere is in between the mantle and the lithosphere. We also have the core, and which is the outer core, which is liquid, and the uh, inner core, which is solid. So the following question contains blank marks. Beneath it is a set of choices. Indicate the choices that is correct and belongs to the blank. Unreal. Uh, GED, you will have to drop down this. This is what we call the drop-down menu. Okay, so the asthenosphere is part of which layer? Actually, this is part of the mantle. So the correct answer will be mantle. Which layer of the earth is responsible for the compass pointing toward the north? So if we go back to the passage, you will see there The outer core, which contains iron, spins as the planet rotates, generating a magnetic field as it flows. So the correct answer for this is letter B, or the outer core. Beneath which location is the Earth's Cross the thickest. Let's see. It says in the passage that it is the thickest in the continental uh, crust. So Atlantic Ocean, of course, it's very deep and therefore thinnest or thin layer. Grand Canyon, of course, is also deep and therefore the crust is thin. Mojave Desert. It is lower than the Mount Everest. So the correct answer for this is letter A. Indicate the box in which each of the following items belongs. So the cell wall is part of the plant cell. The regular shape, of course, that is in the animal cell. Chloroplast is present in plant cell as well as plastids. One or more small vacuoles that is part of the animal cells because the big vacuoles are found or the large vacuoles are found in the plant cell. Questions 27 and 28 are based on the following passage. So Henry stops at a gas station and buys a cup of coffee that he heats in the microwave oven. He then proceeds on his way enjoying the music and the radio in his car. Some miles down the road, he is involved in an accident. Paramedics take him to the nearby hospital for a CT scan. What type of radiation will be used during the CT scan? Of course, uh, the most um, the most powerful type of waves found um, or radiation in here is the X-rays. Because radio waves, microwaves, and infrared radiation is not that powerful and are used in the daily life. So X-rays is used for the CT scan. Of all the types of radiation mentioned in the passage, which one causes the least amount of damage to living tissue and DNA with long-term exposure? So if we're talking about the least amount of damage we can draw to 
radio waves. But not all types of radiation are equally safe, no. Microwaves, um, they can be used, but radio waves has a lesser amount. And of course, radiation used in CT scan is, has a very high amount of uh, radiation and cannot be used uh, in everyday or in long-term exposure. So the correct answer is letter B. While playing hockey, Bree is hit in the leg by a puck. The trainer immediately takes an ice pack at zero degrees centigrade and play, places it in on her injured leg, which is 37 degrees centigrade. This incident occurs in an arena with an air temperature of 14 degrees centigrade, which best explains the direction of the heat flow in the system. The heat flow, the direction of the heat flow must come from where the heat uh, is the highest with the highest temperature so of course uh, with this the highest temperature is from the leg of the player so we have the heat from the leg is transferred to the air and into the ice pack of course the heat from the air uh, the the temperature of the air is higher than the ice pack and therefore the heat from the air is also transferred in the ice pack. So the correct answer for this is letter C. For questions 30 and 31, we have the sun. We have the diagram of the sun, the earth, and the moon. The earth shadow, or yes, covers the moon. So which of the following does the diagram show? So this is an example of a lunar eclipse wherein the earth the earth's shadow is uh, covers that of the moon so the correct answer for this is lunar eclipse which of the following statement is an opinion rather than a fact the length of time an, ec an eclipse is visible can vary the phases of the moon occur in repeated cycles. Certain types of tides are associated with the moon's phases. And a lunar eclipse is more interesting to view than a solar eclipse. All the three first choices, A, B, and C, are facts, while that of B is just an opinion. So the correct answer for that is letter D. So we will use this following diagram to answer question 32. So this diagram involves uh, an uptake, probably of water, and then it goes to the clouds and precipitates, and then there is runoff, surface runoff, and then of course the ground water. So in the hydrologic cycle shown above, letter A represents the process of evaporation. So the correct answer for that is evaporation. So use the following information to answer Questions 33 to 35, both sucrose or sugar and salt will dissolve in water. The temperature of the water determines the amount of each solute that can be dissolved. Once a certain amount of solute is dissolved in the water, the water becomes saturated, meaning no more salt or sugar will dissolve in the solution. Approximately how many grams of salt or sugar will saturate 100 ml of water at 40 degrees at 40 degrees so we have here 40 degrees the temperature of water and sugar Or the sucrose is in here so mm, 
the sucrose is here so we have 250 grams per 100 ml of water so the correct answer for this is letter D which conclusion can be drawn regarding the data when the temperature of water increases the amount of sucrose that can be dissolved decreases of course when the temperature of water increases the amount of sucrose that can be dissolved also increases so we remove letter a increasing the temperature of water significantly increases the amount of salt that can be dissolved let's see that is the amount of uh salt dissolved is uh, not so much even if the temperature gets so high so we remove letter B when the temperature of water increases the amount of sucrose that can be dissolved increases as well yes it increases as well if the temperature of water is uh, increasing so let's see for letter C Letter D, increasing temperature by water by 100% also increases the amount of salt. Of course, when we say the salt, it does not increase uh, its potential in dissolving. So letter D is not the correct answer. The correct answer for this is letter C. Which of the following can be most profit per properly inferred? The amount of sucrose will dissolve in boiling water is approximately 10 times greater than the amount of salt, salt that will dissolve. In all solutes, all have an equal saturation rate when the temperature of water reaches a certain point. No, because we can see already in the graph that the salt did not uh, increase its um, dissolvability. At any temperature, the amount of sucrose will dissolve in water. In 100 ml of water, is nearly 10 times greater than the amount of salt that it will that will dissolve, which is also not correct. The amount of sucrose will dissolve in cold water is approximately the same as the amount of. It did not say if the if there is a cold water because, uh, what is uh in the graph is the warm water or increasing temperature of water so the correct answer for this is letter a so we will answer the diagram use the following diagram to answer question number 36 so we have the diagram uh, for the uh, relationship of the different animals which of the following pairs of animals is most closely related? We have the op op opossum and the platypus. Uh, they are not uh, really connected, although uh, they, ha they have a connection. We have the rat and the mouse. So they have, uh, they're very close. Uh, the cow and the horse. They are not so close. The monkey and the gorilla is not that close. So the correct answer for that, we have the rat and the mouse. We have letter B. So use the following information to answer questions 36 and 38. Relative humidity indicates how much moisture is in the air compared to how much moisture the air can hold at that temperature. Generally, the amount of moisture in the air is less than the amount needed to saturate the air. When the air is saturated, the relative humidity will be near 100%. So, precipitation is more likely to occur in when we have the date. So, if there is relative humidity, so there is also uh, moisture in the air. So more or less, there will be precipitation on the highest one. We have May 5. Okay. 
The following contains blank mark. Beneath the set of choices, indicate the choice that is correct and belongs to the blank. Suppose the temperature is 15 degrees higher in May 8 than originally reported. The relative probably humidity will decrease or increase. The temperature becomes higher by 15 degrees on May 8th. The relative humidity will also decrease because the increase in temperature, the humidity will decrease. So the correct answer for that is decrease. Use the following information to answer questions 39 and 40. Levers, inclined planes, and pulleys are examples of simple machines. A lever pivots around a point and it's used to move or lift an object by applying force to the opposite end. Which of the following is not an example of a lever? So we have the screw, the fork, the scissors, the crowbar, which is not an example of. So the fork, the scissors, and the crowbars can have. Uh, you can you can uh, move or lift the other part or the opposite end, but not that of the screw. So the correct answer for this is screw. Which statement is true regarding the lever shown below? The force in the diagram is applied at point B. Of course, the force is in here. This part, there is a force but because this one uh, goes up. So the, the letter A is not the right answer. The fulcrum is the diagram located at point A, it should be in point C, so that is cor not correct. The fulcrum is located in point C, which is correct. The force in the diagram is applied to point A. The force is applied in here, so this is uh, not the correct answer. The correct answer should be letter C. So that's it. That it that's it for the GED science. I hope you learned something. Have a good day.